Greetings comrades, as promised, now that I'm finished uploading Killzone Trilogy to my channel, I am bringing you this summary video with the whole story of all three parts. I tried to pull all the most important parts in this video to give you a nice overview of the plot and the story before the new Killzone 4 Shadowfall comes out this fall. So here it comes. In not too distant future, the Earth is devastated by a nuclear war. The conglomerate of surviving governments and industries turns to space colonizations. Of course, they settle on our closest neighbor, the system of Alpha Centauri, which has two habitable planets, Vecta and Helgen. Vecta is a lush and blossoming, while Helgen is a pretty and hospitable world, but it turns out very rich in natural resources. At some point, well after the colonization efforts have started on the two planets, United Colonial Nations, or UNC, decides to auction them off to the highest bidder, which turns out to be the Helgen Corporation. No surprise then that uh, such a brilliant move by the UNC went all kinds of wrong, at least as far as UNC itself was concerned. The Helgen Corporation's direction in managing the two planets went at a completely 180 against what UNC intended for it. So what is a rejected interstellar empire to do next, you ask? Of course, the answer is start a war, the first extrasolar war. With the greater resources and military might, the UNC managed to win that war, driving what's left of the Helgel Corporation to seek shelter somewhere outside the planet of Vecta. And the only place available for that mass exodus was Helgen. Uh, that new home uh, wasn't very welcoming and surviving exiles had to adapt and mutate to, in order to live there. Most of the inhabitants were forced to wear masks and air processing equipment. Very few half-breed Hellgast are able to get away with not having that equipment. The first installment of the Killzone trilogy takes us up to a point in time where Hellgast have successfully adapted to the environment and rebuilt their ranks enough to a level that a decision is made by the Autark to launch an attack against a long-time oppressor, the planet of Vecta, uh, which is now, by the way, controlled by Interplanetary Strategic Alliance, or ISA. Here we meet the ISA captain, Jan Templar, for the first time. He is desperately trying to stop the Helmgast offensive, but has a very hard time of it, as the opposing forces are just too overwhelming. When Jan gets to the commanding base uh, to get his orders, the base itself comes under attack. Here, while defending the base, he meets the second playable character, Marshal Luger, who saves Templar for an assassination attempt, and together with him is given a mission to retrieve an ISA spy named Gregor Haka. Haka is believed to have some information very vital to survival of the ISA itself. I just love saying that Haka. Haka is a cool name. Did you make any new friends? And... Are you asking me if I got laid? What? No, no. Jeez, I just... What's that? What's, what's what? that? On the way to the location of Haka, we meet the third member of the team, who is also a playable character, named Ricardo Velasquez, or simply Rico. After brutal confrontations, the group manages to get to the captured spy and learns that he is half Hellgast, which almost causes Rico to kill him <laughs> on the spot right there, because Rico has a very deep hatred of anything Helgen, because his whole unit was just wiped out by them. But after that misunderstanding is settled, Gregor becomes the fourth and the last member of the team, and he's also a playable character. As the group makes their way through some more brutal encounters, Haka, using his knowledge and skills as a spy, discovers that a high-ranking ISA general named Stuart Adams was a traitor. 
He conspired with the enemy to disable the planet's defense systems and enable Helga's army full-on assault on the planet. And now he's planning to turn those same defense systems against the arriving Earth defense fleet sent to rescue Vecta from the invasion. As waves and waves of Helga soldiers fail to stop the small group of four commandos, a Helgan General Lente decides to take matters into his own hands and take care of the problem personally. That attempt, of course, is futile, and the foursome prevails yet again. Lente is killed by no other than Haka. Here we also learn that Haka and Lente used to serve together in the Helgast army and were high-ranking officials there. then hijacks Lenti's space shuttle and heads to the space station, where after some brutal confrontations again, they manage to destroy the station itself, thus killing the traitor General Adams and ensuring that the Earth defense fleet can approach Vecta unharmed. Are coming back. Get through to them and see what the situation is. And tell them about Adams. First call I'll make. Looks like most of the Earth fleet got through okay. They'll send more forces, won't they? The Hellgast, I mean. Yeah, they will. and we'll be there to meet them. This concludes part one of the trilogy. The events of Killzone 2 take place about four years after the original Killzone. At this point, ISA has launched a counter-assault against the home planet of the Hellgast. We soon find out, however, that the air defenses of the planet are very, very good and the invading force isn't able to stick to just attacks from the air in orbit and is forced to engage in the ground face-to-face -face fighting. Never again endure their oppression. Never again endure their tyranny. We will strike without warning and without mercy, fighting as one hand, one heart, one soul. We will shatter their dreams and halt their nightmares, drenching our ancestors' graves with their blood. And as our last breath tears at their lungs, as we rise again from the ruins of our cities, they will know Helgan belongs to the Hellgast. We assume the role of Sergeant Sevchenko, or Sev, who is a part of a special elite, a special force unit 
that is tasked with a simple mission. Take out the Hellgas threat. Rico Velasquez from Killzone 1 is also joining the team. Jan Templar, however, is shown to assume more of a commanding role and is not joining the on-the-ground fight at this time. From the first minutes after Alpha Team leaves the orbiting station, we see that it is not going to be an easy job, as even the very planet itself seems to resist the invaders. After a few easy victories, uh, all seems to be going good for Sev and his comrades, until Hellgast uncover another ace up their sleeve. A mysterious and powerful arc tower that seems to be powered by the planet itself. The first wave of the ground assault gets annihilated, and that stops the ISA progress in its tracks. Sev and his comrades manage to destroy one of the arc towers and send a piece of it for further research by a scientist, Evelyn Batman. As the research is going on, the team does not lose time and continues making its way through the city, capturing a major enemy stronghold named Vasari Square. Come on! War's not over! Keep it moving! Evelyn discovers that uh, the mysterious arc towers are powered by the rare element called Petrocyte, and the Alpha team is tasked with escorting her to what appears to be the source of Petrocyte on the outskirts of the city. The mission does not go as smoothly as planned, of course, and most of the team is captured by the enemy, leaving just seven Rico and Pursuit desperately trying to rescue their friends. The chase takes the duo to the train station and onto the train to some enemy base where Colonel Radic is trying to get the nuclear launch codes from the captured members of the Alpha team. Only the fleet commander has access to the launch codes. Can you reprogram the warheads? Even if I could, I wouldn't. As he's about to execute them for not spilling the beans, Rico, in his usual manner, just rushes in, guns blazing, thus stopping the executions but inadvertently allowing Radic to escape and mortally wound Garza, which is a team member who was a resident door hacker. Garza dies right in Sev's arms and Sev's can't help but blame Rico for the death of their comrade. Just hang on. Come on. Damn it, don't you quit on me now! Garza! Garza! Man down! Medic! Over here! I need help now! I need a medic, God damn it! A very short while after, the team gets back to their home ship, the new sun, and the Hellgast mount a counterattack and board all the ISA starships, including the Musa. The enemy force is so overwhelming that an order goes out to abandon ship. Before the fleet is completely annihilated by Colonel Radek, he manages to get to the fleet commander, our old friend Jan Templar, and figure out the nuclear launch codes. Jan and the scientist Evelyn are both killed in the process. This is unexpected. I'd rather we had met in combat. Like soldiers. I agree. But we find ourselves here. Indeed. Now, give me the nuclear codes. The woman told me they were here. They are. But my access clearance has been revoked. <laughs> oh, you make a very poor liar, Colonel. Now give me the codes. Without authorization from High Command, those codes are going nowhere. Do not 
toy with me. Oh, shit. Download the code data. Right before dying, Yan manages to direct the new sun onto the large petrocyte refinery, thus destroying the whole defense grid Hellgast had around the city. With the defenses down, ISA redoubled their efforts to take over the city. However, the cunning Hellgast have one more ace up their sleeve. They decide to detonate a nuclear weapon in their own capital, thus wiping out most of the ISA forces, along with a great number of innocent civilians. The Alpha team and what little remains of the ISA forces just refuse to give up. Even faced with the overwhelming numbers of the enemy, they proceed to fulfill their main mission objective, taking the Vasari Palace. A number of brutal confrontations occur, including the one where Seb gets to pilot a mech exoskeleton suit, as a result of which the remainder of ISA forces manage to push their way all the way to the Vasari Palace. Finally, Seb and Rico find themselves face to face with the evil Colonel Radic. The heroic duo manages to wound Radic, and unable to face his obvious inferiority, he puts a bullet in his brain. With the last obstacle eliminated from their path, Seven Rico proceed further into the palace and find Scholar Vasari sitting alone in a huge room and contemplating the future of his nation. When he sees that it's just two soldiers that came for him, Vasari tries to insult them and give them a pep talk. Before we surrender, your masters will beg me to restore order. You have not won. You will never go. Rico can't stand for that and kills the bastard instead of arresting him as ordered. In Vasari's last words, we get a nice summary of what's to come in the last part of the trilogy. The story of Killzone 3 starts pretty much right where 2 left off. Sev is sitting on the steps of the Vasari Palace and watching the massive Halgast fleet pass over the city on its way to destroy what's left of ISA invasion force. Captain Narvel shows up at the palace and chews Rico's and Sev's asses off for killing Vasari instead of capturing him. Stupid to follow a direct order to shut the fuck up, Captain! Okay, listen up! But this does not last very long as the aerial bombardment begins and the group is forced to flee. Fire back! 
back at what? Everything! Rico and Sev end up fighting their way through the streets of the city, ruined by the nuclear blast, trying to get to an evacuation point. At one point, Rico disobeys a direct order from Narvel and goes on a rescue mission to help a group of stranded ISA troops, headed by Jammer. Stick to your orders! Fuck your orders! I didn't come here to run from the hell gas. I don't leave people behind. Hold on, Jammer! I'm coming! Sev manages to reach Narvel and the evacuation transport and fails to persuade Narvel to wait for his friend. Under a very heavy attack from Hellgast, the evacuation ships are destroyed, stranding the troops under Narvel's command on a hostile planet. The fate of Rico and Jammer is unknown at this point. Hey! Get to cover! Now! Then the story takes us to a point in time that is six months after the failed evacuation attempt. The remaining ISA forces are hiding out in the Helgen jungle, and there is still no sign of Rico and Jam. Captain Narvel sends Sev on a mission to restore the communications with the Vecton government. There's trouble brewing in the Helgen government as well. Vasari's replacement, Orlok, is challenged by a prominent industrialist, Jorgan Stahl, who is the chairman of the Stahl Arms, the biggest arms manufacturer of Helga. Stahl is deeply disappointed with Orlok's slow and steady approach, and he decides to hunt down the remainder of the ISA using his own private army. He also refuses to provide the newest weapon prototypes to Orlok and his army, causing a bit of a stir. Exactly what you said. You said ours, not months. The people of Helgen want results, not empty promises from you, Orlok. Once again, you somehow managed to distract us from the real topic at hand. Why haven't you delivered your weapon prototype to the military? Because, Admiral, this is irradiated petrocytes. And I will not place weapons of such magnitude into the hands of a total incompetent! Sev witnesses the destructive power of that new weapon prototype when a captured ISA soldier is executed by a Helgen soldier working for Stahl. Using the irradiated creature site, readily available after Helga's nuked their own capital, the weapon makes its victim explode and pretty much vanish into thin air. Soon after Sev manages to establish the satellite link, he and Narvel find out that the Vecton government decided to throw in a towel, and they are ordered to surrender to the Hellgast so that their later release could be negotiated. This does not sit well with anyone, but the ISA has no time to dwell on that fact as they are promptly attacked by the Stahl's mercenaries, and after a very brutal fight resulting in the death of most of the personnel, both Narvel and Sev are captured and put into a transport to be delivered to one of the Stahl's bases. Open your eyes. Get up! Oh, fuck off! Get, get up! And I said fuck off! Oh. Things start to look up for Sev when his long-lost buddy, Rico, reappears on the scene. Turns out both Rico and Jammer appear to be more than just alive. They managed to salvage what was left of the ISA Air Forces and kept them alive and well for six months. As a result of some amazing mid-air acrobatics and sheer dumb luck, 
Uh, Sev is rescued, however, Helgast managed to hold on to Norville and elude the ISA forces. Oh, shit! Sir! Sir! You're right! Sev and Rico mount a full rescue operation and fight their way through the huge Stall Arms military complex, where our hero even gets to try his hand at flying. Due to some impressive teamwork, Rico and Seb managed to get their hands on a pair of Hellgast executioners that were on their way to publicly kill the captured ISA soldiers, including Narva. They quickly dispatch them and use their disguises to get into the heart of the military base. What are you doing? Getting us inside. So, to honor the Zari, tomorrow we launch the greatest military campaign in our history. And to celebrate that, I will give you justice. Revenge! And the death of his killers! Stahl's plans are thwarted, and he almost dies in the process when Sev turns the executioner's weapons on him. The Alphas also discover that the experimental weapon that uses the irradiated petrocyte can be scaled up, way, way up, and can be used against a whole planet. And the planet that is currently in Stahl's crosshairs is none other than Earth itself. Jesus Christ! Needless to say, Narvel and a bunch of other ISA troops are saved from Hellgast, and the group makes its way out of the compound. The dynamic duo of Seven and Rico give chase to Stahl using a new type of ice or snow vehicle. At the same time, the rest of ISA forces get into trouble after encountering a new kind of arc tower defense system. This one's powered by irradiated petrocyte. Our heroes come to the rescue once again by hijacking a humongous moving recycling factory and driving it right through the defensive perimeter and clearing the way Rico, to the space element. This? Yeah. Meanwhile, on a space station itself, Stahl, defiant and arrogant as ever, kills Orlok 
and continues his preparations for his evil plan to use the Petrocyte weapon to destroy the planet of Earth. Unless... What if I had no enemies left to fight? What if I used my weapons and killed everyone on Earth? The plan, however, does not come to fruition. Sev's group, having used a space elevator and fought their way through the space station, hijack two space fighters and shoot down the Stahl's cruiser carrying the weapon. The damaged ship drops down into the atmosphere of Helgen, almost crashing into its surface. But still, it survives. Sev wants to make sure that the weapon is not used yeah, ever again and so. drops a nuke onto the cruiser. The irradiated petrocyte on board the ship explodes and engulfs the whole planet, destroying most of life on its surface. Looks like we'll be coming up on the space station in a second. Oh my god. I'm not hearing any comm traffic. Yeah. We took out the whole fleet. I mean nothing. The entire planet is silent. Jesus, how many people were down there? After the credits, we do see another short cutscene, where an escape pod lands on the planet, and two Helgas soldiers welcome someone back. We can only guess who exits the capsule, but it's most likely Stahl himself. This concludes the trilogy and paves the way for the next installment of the series, Killzone Shadowfall. The story here will take place 30 years after the events of Killzone 3. Shadowfall is scheduled to be released in the fall of 2013 as a launch title for the PS4. I will definitely be playing that on my channel, so please subscribe and I hope to see you back very soon. Thanks for watching!